Well, hello, this is Dan Grissom. I'm an assistant professor at Azusa Pacific University in the Department of Engineering and Computer Science. Um, and I wanted to pick up, pick up uh, where we left off with the last video. Okay, so hopefully you watched the last video and you saw everything about uh, how to essentially use uh, Bitbucket um, to create a repository and then how to use source tree to check in files. We learned how to um, the delete add new files and change files and things like that and kind of look a little bit into our our history right here okay um, all right so in this tutorial what I want to show you is really how uh, you will um, essentially use the skeleton files that we have for our CS220 or 225 class to create a project and then actually submit those files okay so for now, we don't really need any of our uh, repository stuff open, so I'll go ahead and just close that for now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, if you if you kind of followed along with me, I had in my C drive a code repository folder, okay? And inside that code repository folder, I created this CS220 repository, and I had lab1, okay? So I could actually open up lab1. You can see it's just kind of a little bit of just a skeleton file in there. Um, I had kind of add my name in there um, you can see for uh, file 2 uh, very similar thing okay so this one I hadn't changed at all okay so um, th that's what we start off with and that's what you'll start off with okay so you have some stuff in here again I kind of had a little bit of gibberish in there um, but I could go ahead and put my answers you know for problem 1 for problem 2 the book problem all that stuff right uh, whatever I happen to be whatever problems I was doing okay um, and I, I just so happen to have some working code here. Okay, so I'll kind of work with that in just a second. Um, but the first thing I want to do is actually create a project. Okay, so I'm going to assume you're starting on lab one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just open up Eclipse. Okay, so it's going to right off the bat, it's going to ask me what my workspace is. So I'm just going to browse. Okay, so again, I'm going to go to um, C drive. I happen to have my stuff in code repository and then I have CS220 repository. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up so essentially I have my workspace in this repository folder that has all of my different labs and projects in there for CS220, okay? So I'll go ahead and, and, and with the 220 repository clicked, I'll hit OK, and I'm gonna hit OK again. Okay, so it's gonna come up with a, a new kind of empty workspace the package explorer will be over here it'll be empty and I'm gonna go ahead and just right click I'm gonna say new Java project okay let me kinda of get a little bit more room here so we can see what's going on um, so I'll have on the right side um, my uh, you can see it already started to create a little bit of stuff here the metadata so um, <clears throat> lab one I'll just kinda of have that open so you can see what's in there so again I'll, I'll right click I'll say new Java project and I want to make sure that I call it the exact same thing as this folder lab one okay if I'm working on lab two I'm gonna call it lab two project one whatever uh, project or lab you're working on okay so it might be a good idea to actually go ahead and copy that name go ahead and paste it in there okay you're gonna see it has like this extra stuff if I name it anything else if the folder doesn't exist it's not gonna have this little exclamation so you know you're doing the right thing when it starts to say the wizard will help you out Okay, so go ahead and once you, you have lab one in there, just click finish. Okay, you'll see essentially what it does is it adds a bunch of um, Eclipse files in here and it actually goes ahead and compiles your code. It gives you these class folders. Okay, now normally I wouldn't recommend this structure. I would normally create a project and then add some stuff to it. Um, normally if I create um, a folder, I'll go ahead and just do this so you can see if I say Java project and you know lab 100 we don't have that many if I just create one from scratch and click finish go back here you're gonna see lab 100 it creates a somewhat of a different structure okay, it has um, the source folder where we should ideally put our Java files and it has the bin folder where the dot class files will be saved um, this, so this is what I would typically recommend um, but we're gonna do it uh, a little bit more simple um, for the purposes of uh, working with our auto grader. Okay, our auto grader basically needs the Java files to be uh, right here in this top level directory. Okay, 
Um, so that's why we're kind of doing it in a way that's not quite ideal, not having the source directory and the bin directory. Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, just remove this from my workspace real quick. Kind of gave me an error because I already deleted it from the file system. But if I go in here, I'll see default package. Now you want to always make sure that all your code is in a default package. Okay, so don't don't put it in any special packages or anything like that. Okay, so I can open my code up and I can run it. So I'll go full screen here and click play, and you can see it's just saying my name, lab one, problem one. I can open up the next one for problem two. You can see that it's going to say first name, last name, lab one, problem two. So I haven't changed anything here. Okay, so um, again, I just so happen to have um, the working code over here. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, I'll go ahead and bring this over here. So I'll copy this into my files. Okay, so part two working code. Okay, um, if you're doing this, don't get too excited. You're just you know that you're going to be able to get the code from this video because it's already in the book. This exercise, you're just copying um, code from the book and kind of getting your first uh, getting your feet wet for the first time with Java programming. So anyway, this is the, this is the code you're going to write from the book. So I have the perfect example. So again, if I just click play, it might ask me if I want to ask you this. This basically means that you need to. Um, it wants to know if you want to save your. If you see this little star up here, it means I've changed my code and I haven't saved it. So go ahead and just click Always Save Resources before launching. If it asks you, and hit OK. Okay, so you can see it's actually um, giving me the results of this code. You can kind of see the, the the resemblance up here. If I click on this file, it'll do the same thing, right? It'll get me the the specific outputs for um, this file, right? So just keep that in mind um, when you're if you have two different programs open. Just make sure the one that you want to run is open. The file that you want to run with the with this um, main method in here. Okay. All right. So once you're done with that, um, essentially, I'm going to go back to my folder here where I have all my files. And again, I'll you know kind of open this to see that we did. You know, this is the updated version of it. Okay. So um, what you can do is essentially um, go back a directory so you can see your whole lab folder okay simply right click on the lab folder if you have your own zip program you can use it using Windows 10 the easiest way to do it is just to simply say um, send to compress zip folder okay it's gonna automatically create a zip folder with lab one as its title just hit enter it'll save it there um, so again if I actually say um, open with Windows Explorer you can basically see what's in there okay so I always recommend doing this you'll see I'm in the compressed folder up here and just make sure that your code is what you think it is okay make sure that um, what I'm about to submit online actually contains the stuff I want so I'll check the book problems okay so now I see all the you know the the text and the Java files that I really care about are all in good shape okay all this other stuff you actually don't need to submit like the dot class path the dot class files right here this is all kind of just it's um, it's not needed by the autograder, but it won't hurt it. Um, so you know, rather than taking the risk of telling you to delete stuff and you accidentally deleting important stuff, um, let's just not mess with it. Okay. So again, I have this lab one zip folder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go online to the Mimir platform. Okay. So um, open up a browser and just basically search for uh, Mimir platform. This is the easiest way to do this. And you'll see a few links down. You'll notice one that actually has mimirplatform.io. Okay, go ahead and click that one. Click on login. Um, okay, so I'm already logged in. It'll If you're not logged in, it'll come up with a link to log in. Um, you'll see right here I actually have, if if the the assignment is actually open in the Mimir platform, you'll notice that it's it's right here. You can just click on it. If it's not, you can go over to my current courses. I'm enrolled in a few here, so you can just click on 220 or 225, whichever course you're in. And it'll come up with the projects under coursework. Just go ahead and click that project. Um, and you'll basically see two things over here. Okay, so you'll see an object to get the skeleton code. Okay, so the skeleton code is basically all the code that um, I've already given you for all the projects, but just for this one particular project. So you can get that there if you want it, but you should already have it here. Um, and then you'll notice over here is the submit project, and you'll say two remaining. 
Okay, so essentially what's happening is it gives you two chances to submit. This may change depending on what project. It may say three or four, it may just say one. But for this particular project, um, uh, for the lab one, there are two submissions, at least at the moment. So go ahead and click Submit Project. And you'll notice that it'll basically just come up with this pop-up, File Input. So I'm just going to click Browse. Essentially, I'm going to go find my lab now. Okay, so for me, it was in this PC, the C drive, code repository, CS220 repository, and then I have it right down here, lab one. Okay, so go ahead and click open and then click submit. Um, now, it just depends on, you know, if the, if the test cases are ready and, and actually active, you notice that it says submission graded. So it's actually already done at least a good portion of grading, at least the portions that can be auto graded. So you can see it says graded right here, it says view details. So I can go ahead and click on my submission. Okay, and it, you'll basically be able to see all the files that I have in here. Okay, so you can click on my book problems, I can see what I submitted for that. And you know, this is where it kind of has it, these class files. We can basically ignore this. This is just files that Java creates. Again, you can delete these if you want, but you don't have to. It'll it'll kind of just look ugly here, but won't hurt anything otherwise. Um, and then you'll notice here are uh, here's my code for uh, the first file, and here's my code for problem two. Okay. Um, one thing that I just want to really emphasize is that uh, don't ever change the name of the files or the names of the classes. Okay, so this is very important. Um, when, when you submit this stuff to the auto grader, it is essentially looking for this specific class name to run this problem. Okay, it's going to run this problem and it's going to check uh, the output and things like that to make sure that your output is similar to what it's expected. Okay, so you can see down here it actually um, gives you it actually gives you a um, a success or will give you a, a failure, assuming that the test cases are ready for, for you to run. Okay, so in this case uh, we succeeded. I, I submitted the perfect code. Um, <clears throat> you can actually click on it and it'll show you what your code is outputting given uh, the test cases that we run. So you can uh, kind of really, really see what's happening here. Okay, um, and that's the gist of it. Okay, um, so there we had a pretty good uh, case. Um, everything passed. You can maybe click on some code analysis and internet plagiarism if it's there. So we can see we ran some tests on the internet to see if this project submission seemed, seems plagiarized. These tests will often return false positives, but you can take a look here. Okay, so it looks like it, it found some stuff um, that apparently looks somewhere. It looks like look, it's the class path. These are actually the files that um, probably kind of this extra stuff. Okay, so it's saying, hey, this looks similar to something else. And that makes sense because this is just a, a generic, um, <clears throat> this is just a generic Eclipse file. Okay, so don't worry about that too much. But again, you might just remove that stuff to avoid uh, the chances of your, your stuff ever getting flagged in the first place. Okay, so let's actually do that. Um, so I'll go ahead and come back here. And uh, what I wanna do now is, um, I'll go ahead and change my code a little bit. Okay, so I'm actually gonna break my code to just kind of show you what happens. So all my system.outputs, I'm gonna just delete from this um, particular um, <clears throat> run, or for this particular pro problem one. So I'll go ahead and click play. Um, and you can see it's not outputting hardly anything other than my name, okay? So I'll go ahead and again, I can, I can open this up just to make sure that this is the file I really just uh, updated you can see that it is it doesn't have any of the outputs there okay so what I'm gonna do I'll go ahead and um, delete this I'm actually going to copy this directory okay I'm just gonna gonna copy it and then I'm gonna paste a version of it on my desktop okay so it's always good to you know these are this is your working directory all your files I don't want to start deleting stuff in case I actually delete something I didn't mean to and I can't restore it for some reason so I always like to make a copy I'm gonna go ahead and delete this this other stuff just to be you know a little bit more cleaner so I'm gonna delete the, the dot class so all I really want to submit is my dot Java files in this case my dot dex my dot text file okay so there's my stuff again just do the double check to make sure everything's there um, my file here 
is not right, but this is you know what I want to do for this particular example. Okay, so I'll go ahead and again um, send to zip folder. Okay, so let me go back to my submission. Okay, I can go back and say lab one, and you'll notice that I have one remaining. Okay, so maybe I didn't think my first submission was good. Maybe I actually the auto grader pointed something out, or maybe I actually just realized, hey, I, I forgot to do something. And again, this is all assuming you have more than one submission, but I can go ahead and um, try and submit my project again. Okay, so I'm going to browse. I'm going to get my new lab one, which is on my desktop. So again, we always have to submit a zip file with everything in it. Click open and then click submit. Okay, you can see it's grading right now, and when it's done, it'll say graded and it'll kind of give you this pop up in the corner. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click on view details. Okay, so now um, we see a few different things, right? We just have the Java source code files and the .txt file right here. Um, but you'll notice that um, my output failed here. Okay, you can see it says failure. I'll click on this and it will kind of, um, it'll show me what I outputted, right? And it'll give me a little pointer. Okay, so again, it says something like this. Your output is not similar to that from the book. Okay, you can see here it says your teachers provided this text to help you work through solving this test case. Okay, some of these test cases may be very specific and may kind of really tell you exactly what's wrong. Some of them may get say maybe a little bit more general to kind of get you to not necessarily give you the answer of what you did wrong, but to just kind of point you in the general area uh, so you can go and look at that. Okay, so um, again we can do code analysis will kind of show us um, some things here. Uh, check internet plagiarism so you can see it kind of gives us some ideas of you know maybe what some apparently there's something in there that thinks maybe but I, again I wouldn't worry about this too much but it's there you know it's there for you to kind of look at and, and especially if you just copied and pasted um, be aware that you know this is happening right if you found something online whether it's for this class or maybe a, a class you know an upper class upper division class or Maybe there are a lot more resources online that you could, you could just copy and paste. Um, just be aware that you know it is it is looking for this stuff. Okay. Um, you can also download your own code if you want. You can just you know click download right there, and it will um, it'll download it. You can kind of see it in, an, in a zip file if you wanna if you wanna go ahead and save that back to your computer for some reason. Okay. But other than that, um, that's pretty much it. So, you know, again, you can click on computer science and you'll notice that um, now I come back here and it actually removed the submissions link because I've done my two submissions. Okay, um, with that, uh, I think that's about everything I wanted to show you for this tutorial. So thanks for watching.